Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Lopez with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. This case began back in uh, Saturday, August 24th of 2024. Members of the Sheriff's Department responded to the Beyond Smoke Shop located at 4838 West Earl Bronson Memorial Highway. We responded to reference to a call of a shooting. When deputies arrived on scene, they found the victim in the parking lot with a gunshot wound to the head. The victim was declared deceased shortly afterwards by the Osceola Regional Hospital. The victim was identified as 24-year-old male Onyx Ramirez. During the investigation, detectives with my office were able to find surveillance videos. In the area that they captured, in the area, and the videos that we uh, obtained caught the murder on camera. Um, the killer can be seen pulling out a gun and pointing it toward the back of the victim's head, pulling the trigger and killing him. That's the suspect right there. He's 24-year-old Jordani Ramos. Oliveira. When Donnie shot Mr. Ramirez, the bullet ended up traveling through and striking Jordan, Donnie's only f own friend who was there at the scene uh, in the hand, but he survived. Tragically, Mr. Ramirez did not. About a week and a half after this shooting, the sheriff's office obtained an arrest warrant for Jordani Oliveira. In the process of obtaining the warrant, um, we learned that Jordani had fled to Puerto Rico. Luckily, your sheriff and our agency has an agreement with the government of Puerto Rico to assist each other in the apprehension of wanted criminals. It's an MOU, and when they flee over there, we start making phone calls with our liaison here, and it's a little bit of a faster process. We gather that intel, and um, we find out where they are, and then they'll detain them based on our warrants. And this uh, agreement always comes in pretty handy. I established that when I first took office. He was arrested and detained not even 24 hours after we let Puerto Rico know that he was of the island. He was detained in Puerto Rico, and he went through the extradition process. And this weekend, he was brought back to Osceola County without incident. He's now waiting prosecution on murder charges and is sitting in the Osceola County Jail with no bond. I want to thank Puerto Rico's law enforcement professionals for handling this case so effectively. I also want to thank the state attorney's office for their communication in this case. We had excellent communication with the state to make sure we're on the same page and as we arrested and processed Jordan, Jordan Hani for murder. And these guys right here, homicide detectives, they do a great job. They worked uh, 24 hours, 36 hours, 40, they, they work around the clock to make sure when things like this happen, they take it personal and they make sure that they work hard so we can uh, follow up on all leads and affect the arrest. Um, and they're working with uh, law enforcement technologies, which in this case, we've had about nine murder cases in Osceola, it's very low, and a majority of them were caught on video through our surveillance cameras um, in our real-time crime center. So the technologies have been working in our favor in helping apprehend uh, suspects. Um, we're still growing, um, but I'm just proud of our law enforcement deputies and our agency and how we've come along these last few years and using technologies through law enforcement has really been working and we're going to continue to improve them. They put in a lot of hard work in this case and everything has worked smoothly and the murderer is now back in Osceola County. Okay, English questions. Have your detectives been able to uncover any motive for the shooting? Well, what we gathered was there was some type of disagreement um, with these individuals. We don't have a lot of details of that yet because obviously the victim's deceased and the other individual doesn't want to talk. Um, the suspect's friend was shot in the hand during the incident because he struck the victim, um, but he won't be charged with murder at this Let this work itself out. Are you talking about career criminal here with this guy? Um, he's got a couple felonies, some misdemeanors, some conviction, street racing, and uh, now he'll hopefully have a murder conviction and go to prison for a long time. Hey, can you tell us anything about any details about this victim? The victim had a little bit of a criminal history. I don't have a lot of details on him. However, like I said, we don't have a lot of details on why this all happened. Obviously, it was an argument um, that escalated to the point where this, uh, this guy thought it was okay to stand behind him like a coward and shoot him in the back of the head and kill him. Is the suspect friend, is the suspect friend cooperating with the investigation? Um, has he been cooperating and talking to you guys about this? These are the guys that have been working the case. He, uh, he spoke initially, but uh, since then. Um, okay. Yeah, sometimes they cooperate, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, a lot of them, they'll lawyer up and, uh, you know, but at the end, this guy's still on video doing what he did, and um, he's not going to be able to run from that. That's a tough one, but is there any way that they could get it done? Like, did the you video of the murder? Not, not so oh. the shooting. Well, not like yet. Of, of the surveillance. We could talk to 
our attorneys to see if uh, anything can be released in that nature, but right now it's in the state attorney's hands and they're all reviewing that. So if it's an active investigation, it's gonna be very limited what we can release on that part. Excuse me, Ryan, will you guys be releasing this video? Yes, we can release this, okay. yes. Excuse me. Now, is there anything that our viewers can do to help you guys successfully complete this case? Well, the two people who are, who, his buddy was shot in the hand because he was there, and this guy's caught on video shooting him. Right now, you know, it's, it, we got him on a murder. The video, you can't run from a video. Other than that, little by little, as this case uh, comes together, um, I, I don't know if any other details would make um, a difference in this case because it's not self-defense. He shoots him in the back of the head. Um, you know, I, I can't see a reason why you would execute anyone like that. But if the viewers do have any information, of course, gladly we'll take it. Um, but like I said, it's uh, hopefully the, the video will tell the story and this guy go to jail for a very long time. And it just so happens to have happened at the smoke shop. Did the victim work there or anything like that? I don't believe they worked there. I think it was just there and there was an argument and maybe they met there for whatever reasons. The suspect in this, um, did he, <clears throat> are you aware if he had any uh, gang affiliation or any, any ties of that nature? I mean, you know, a lot of people, when you think about gangs, you think about Chicago, you think about the California, you know, the Bloods, the Crips, the Latin Kings. A lot of these guys here aren't really affiliated to a big gang, like what they're talking about that comes from Venezuela, Trinjarawa, that are kind of organized. These are just guys, groups of people who they start slinging dope or, or just become involved with, with petty issues with each other. But as to like any type of a, a gang relationship, I, I couldn't tell you 100% that that's what's going on here. Well, because this guy keeps smiling during his perp walk. Yeah, he's an idiot. He thinks he's going to get away with it, but he's not. Because guess who's smiling last? We are. And now he's in jail. Could you just clarify the dates again? You said this all happened on Saturday, August 24th. And then when did he go to Puerto Rico? He went to Puerto Rico about 24 hours later. Uh -huh. We made contact. We had the warrant already signed, and they detained him right around the same time. Uh, the, the reason it took a little bit longer for him to get here is because sometimes uh, the fugitives, when they run, they can waive the extradition process to hurry up and get their cases over with. In this case, he wanted to fight the extradition, uh, but it was denied. That's why it took a little bit longer because he had an attorney. But eventually, the government denied it, and, and they, they, he's here now. And when did he get here? I believe he was here on uh, September. It's like last Saturday, right? Friday, last, this past Friday, whatever date that was. Sorry, I don't have the date here with me. But he was just brought back last Friday, like the 24th or the 20th, yeah, 25th. Do we have a spelling on the victim's name? Yes, the victim, we'll get that. I'll have him get that for you when we're done. Anything else? We're good? Okay, all right, well thank you everyone, take care.